Hello. Hi, is this Tommy? Uh, yes. Hey, Tommy, this is um, Tommy Bryson from YouTube. Just to let you know, this call is live. So people can hear oh. you. Yeah. How oh. can I help? <laughs> What's going on, bro? What's going on, bro? How can I help? Oh, well, my bad. First thing, I ain't know who this was. And then so I just got uh, my haircut. Sorry. But um, I had a billion questions about Acorn. And okay. so I'm just now getting started with it. Uh, I'm doing that and Robin Hood. And the first thing first, I really don't have that much uh, debt. Like, I only got something for my couch and uh, my TV. And so I was just, I needed a couple questions. So first, I know to pay off my debt. And then two, I wanted to know how much should I keep putting in weekly or monthly to get bigger and better results for Acorn? Okay. So the first thing is, Acorns is a brokerage account where they have full control over your investment. So they have the potential to switch a portfolio from whatever they want, whenever they want to. They have that permission. So it's really, really passive, meaning they can do whatever they want and schedule whatever they want to do. So keep that in mind. I don't use okay. Acorns anymore. I use M1 Finance with my old Acorns portfolio because that way they can't switch it or sell my investments or anything crazy. So that's what I use. Now, if how old are you by the way i'm 26. what's your income per month um per month uh Nuts. i work for the office so it's roughly like around i say i'm pushing close to four okay because i do i'm doing eight hours well not eight hours every day i'm doing 12 12 or 11 every okay. day and i'm guessing like your goal is to build passive income so you don't have to do those 12 hours you already know all right, so, and you have some debt, which is your couch and your TV? Yes. Well, no, no, my couch and my car. My car, no, I got about 10000 left uh, okay. on my car. Okay, so the good thing is you don't have to sell a car if you don't want to, but if you sell the car, it'll just be a lot more easier and just buy a car you can actually afford. Do you have cash? Um. Yes. How much? I have, well, first, um, I realized I wasn't, you know, in the right place and stuff like that. So I have about close to 5000 in my awesome. savings account, which I literally just got some of that from basically the back pay with the post office. And I'm also getting like, uh, I, I want to say like close to four or five in my uh, Navy Federal account. And I'm getting that from my disability. Okay. So if I'm, if my name is Tommy... I'm 26 years old. I'm making around $4,000. I have 5K in cash. And I have, for example, 10K in my car note. And I have, for example, some other debt. And I also want to learn about investing. What is my next step? The first thing is I'm getting a budget, right? So yeah. it doesn't help me manage my money. Your main expenses are four, right? You have shelter, utilities, groceries, transportation. Everything else outside of that, aside from insurance, is just going to be a want. So I will cut those things out. Second, I'm going to go ahead and save just a thousand dollars. So off of that five thousand dollars, I'm going to take a thousand and put that, for example, in a separate account and call that my mini emergency account. Right. OK. Yes, sir. Third, I'll use all the rest of the money plus all my extra income whenever I get paid to pay off my debts using the avalanche method, meaning I pay the debt with the highest APR. The one that costs you the most money, that's the one you pay. So in this case, you have $4,000. Plus, if you get to, by cutting your bills, you're able to keep like at least um, 20% of your income. So if you make $4,000, multiply by 20%, that's an extra like $800 per month. You're able to put an extra $800 per month towards your debt every single month. So that means, if you owe, let's say, let's just say, for example, twelve thousand dollars in total in debt, mm -hmm. minus four thousand dollars tomorrow, you only owe eight thousand. Divided by eight hundred, that means you'll be done, for example, in ten months with all your debt. If you get mm -hmm. a side hustle, the thing is, it's pretty hard because you're already working twelve hours, so they'll be pushing it a lot. So, I'll just probably, if I were you, I'll take the, I'll take, for example, just um my income currently and do it with that, so I'm not miserable. So in 10 months, you're 100% debt free. Now, what's my next step? I'm not investing. Notice I haven't said anything about investing just yet. 
I'm going to save six months to three months worth of emergency money for my expenses. If something happens to me, if things do go wrong, I want to have cash to take care of myself for a minimum of three to six months. That should take you around maybe like um with your with your current um if you're spending like say four thousand dollars divided by eighty percent that you're actually using, which is um let's just see here, four thousand multiplied by point eight, that's around three thousand two hundred multiplied by three. You leave somewhere like around like nine thousand six hundred. So if you're able to put aside the same eight hundred dollars. That's going to be like around 12 months. So 12 months to have that full blown emergency account. But again, I'm saying this, but if you're able to save more than half your income, right, then you'll do yeah. this, all the stuff just like a lot more quicker, right? If you're not spending so much crazy money, then you'll do this a lot, lot more faster. That's the whole point. So once you have the emergency money, then you start investing that 10, 20% into your retirement accounts, into the index funds and so on, whether it's into acorns roth ira now the taxable account and the 401k with your company does that make sense yeah it, it makes plenty of sense with and the I rest got of your money right point. you can use uh -huh. that money to start saving up and making a fund for your um for your house like you're buying a home does that make sense that's the idea yeah. go ahead what okay. were we gonna say all right so my first question was why did you stop with acorn like was it do you like to have control of your stocks or stuff like that investing or was you just playing like not feeling it no more um i don't i don't it's not really like i'm like not, not feeling it anymore the reason i switched from acorns was i was using them as my primary account for investing so imagine for mm -hmm. example you're investing 20 percent of your income right now it might not be a lot but eventually it'll add up to a lot of money now, when you do Acorns, it's a passive investment method because they're basically investing into index funds and ETFs or whatever it is. So it's supposed to be passive. So you do that to save money on fees and taxes. But Acorns, for example, I think they got an investment, allegedly don't want to get sued, from BlackRock. BlackRock is also an investment company. So when that happened, they switch over their old portfolio, which was basically made up of a bunch of um, Vanguard um, ETFs over to the BlackRock ones. Now that means mm -hmm. they sold my portfolio and then bought with that money, those investments, right? I'm not saying it's a bad portfolio, but then that cost me a bunch of money in capital gains tax because it's sold. Mm -hmm. And whenever you sell, you pay taxes if you have a gain and I had a gain. And who's to say, for example, that won't happen again. So to avoid that, I went with M1 Finance where I build the same portfolio, right? The last one that I had. I'm able to invest into it automatically and manage it the same way as Acorns. But this way, no one's going to sell it because I'm not selling anything. Because again, it's for the long term. And I'm going to finance mm -hmm. for example, Roth IRAs. They have IRAs. They can do rollovers with your 401k. They can do everything and anything that Acorns was doing. Makes yeah, sense? Because my, yeah, it makes perfect sense. My thing is, you know, I want to become, you know, once I retire and stuff like that, you know, I want to become not just, you know, I don't want to have just a million in the bank. I want, you know, at least two or three. So that's you why need, you don't need. OK, so stop there. Right. Um, let's be realistic. Right. You don't need two, three million dollars or a million dollars. Right. What you need is more income that you're going to be spending in passive income. So with the plan I just gave you. Right. When you're debt free, you have a full blown emergency account and you're investing, for example, 10, 20 percent of your income when you buy that home. And you buy, for example, using the 30% rule, meaning, hey, I bought this home is no more than a third of my income. And I bought it also on a 15 year mortgage. That means you'll be done paying it a lot faster. If you put extra income towards it, you'll be done, for example, in 10 years. So now mm -hmm. 10 years later, right, Tommy, it means you're saving 33% of your income that you would be spending, for example, on, on, on your mortgage. That's just free cash flow for yourself now. Does that make mm. sense? Meaning your expenses are very low because all you have is utilities, um, groceries and transportation, a little bit of insurance and taxes on the, on the home, but that's it. And maintenance, meaning if all you need to live is, for example, let's say $30,000 a year because you don't spend that much money. If we use the 4% rule, that means all you're going to need to get that money, for example, in passive income is around 750 K to pay you that much money every single year in passive income. But that's not it, because 
if you have a job that you actually enjoy and you love, right, you're able to still work that job, still earn money and still make money at the same time. Passive income, so just like live the life you want to live, but you don't need a million dollars to a million or three million. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it makes perfect sense. It makes sense. That's the idea. So if your job has a 401k and they offer a match, the, the whole goal is to invest there to get the max match. The rest of the money that's left over, you put it into your Roth IRA and you grow it. In order to get $3 million, bro, it takes a lot of money investing per month. But you don't need that if you take care of the house because that's going to be your highest expense. And the only reason you need so much money is to take care of those expenses. But if that doesn't exist anymore, then you don't need that much money. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. It, it that's, makes a lot of sense. That's the idea, brother. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Any more questions? Thank it's too. Now on, I understand first I need to take care of these debts and get them yes. off of me first. I guess, exactly, you know. exactly, exactly. That way, because, you know, the last thing you want to do is you don't want to start investing now because if you have an emergency, you'll have to sell your investments or you have to pause everything. And you'll always mm -hmm. be, for example, just like barely surviving because you have debt people to pay. Does that make sense? That's the whole idea there. Yeah, yeah, it, it makes perfect sense. I understand because, yeah, I, I understand I need to stop. All right, brother. Have a budget. Take care of it. Welcome to the long-term team. Any questions, bro, you're always welcome to come on here. Call me whenever you want, okay? No problem. Thank you so much for the help, too. All right. Peace out, man. See you later. All right, guys. So that right there was Tommy. I haven't really met that many people with my name, so that's pretty awesome. But overall, you see, people have this very unrealistic idea. Tommy, I'm going to need at least 2 $3 million to retire, and if I don't have that much money... I'm just going to be poor for the rest of my life. The answer is no, it's not true. You don't need that much money. I'm going to show you guys something that's actually very interesting. Just so you guys see this for perspective, okay? If you go over to Google, let's go right here. Um, let's go on Google and type in, for example, savings goal calculator, right? So I'm going to go right here and flip over to the screen. Right here is Google, right? This is Google. And click, for example, right here, savings goal calculator.gov. Click it. Right. I hope everything's visible. Let me zoom in a little bit further. But here's all the numbers here. Right. What's my goal? My goal is to have, for example, three million dollars. Like you said, it's a lot of money, man. People think it's not a lot. It's a lot of money. So I'm going to start, for example, with let's say he has a thousand dollars. I'm going to start with a thousand dollars. OK, great. When do you want this money in 30 years? OK, great. How much will you make? Ten percent on it. Calculate. You need to invest around $1,510. If you're making, for example, let's cut back to myself over here. If you're making, for example, $4,000, well, right here, $1,400, I mean, $1,510 divided by $4,000, that's going to be somewhere around 37% of your money. Right there, 37%. But you also have a mortgage. So that's 33% right there. And you also have, for example, all your other bills. So how do you do it, right? So that's the answer. It's, it's hard. And that's 30 years from now. Imagine if I said, well, let's get it done, for example, in, in 20 years, for example. Well, that's going to be $4,355. You don't even make that much money. Is it so much money that is? It's a crazy amount of money. If you want to do it in 10 years, guess what? That's... $15,000 a month. It's a lot of money, right? But if I tell you, well, let's just do, for example, $750,000. That's different. Because, for example, to do it in 10 years, that's like $4,000, right? But not realistic. Let's do 20 years. 20 years of doing this, guess what? It's only 1000 bucks, right? A little bit a little bit better, around like 25% of your income. If you want to do it, for example, 25 years, let's just say 30 years to make this a lot more simple. 30 years. That's only, for example, $371. But you are investing, guess how much? You're going ahead, let's cut back to my main camera here, but you are going ahead and basically investing 20% of your income, which is 4,000 multiplied by 20% is $800, right? So right there, $800. Now, let's go use a compound interest calculator to run these numbers, right? Because that's important to run numbers with your real numbers so you know what the math is actually like right it's the whole point of this whole thing so if you go right here 
if I'm going to start off, for example, with $1,000, and I'm going to add every single year, multiply by 12, 800, right? Multiply by 12 is $9,600 right here. And I'm going to give this money 20 years to grow a 10% return. I'm going to have, for example, right here, $611,000. Remember, this money is going to grow 100% tax-free. That is the amazing thing about compound interest by this point guess what you have a fully paid off home right which is awesome you have a full-blown emergency account you have no crazy high bills so that's the point right there that's what i try to break down to people you don't need as much money as you think you need if you pay off the home and you make that a priority